The EU's new top diplomat, Federica Mogherini, says that the Union must look harder for ways to compromise with Moscow over the situation in Ukraine. But she also said that sanction pressure must be kept up and that action must be taken together with NATO. To discuss this in more detail, we're joined now by the former Vice President of the OSCE Assembly, former Deputy Defence Minister of Germany, Willy Wimmer, on the line now. Mr Wimmer, welcome. Um, Federica Mogherini uh, says that she thinks the EU has to engage in increased dialogue with Moscow. Now, that's something a lot of uh, critics would say her predecessor wasn't particularly keen on. Does this mean we could be seeing a a new high, improved relations between the EU and Russia? I think it's a little bit too early to say this, but uh, the first remarks of uh, this Italian lady who is now responsible for European Union foreign policy was interesting because she didn't continue the um, words uh, predecessors used, and especially words which are today still used in NATO. So this was a first sign of a new position and uh, everybody in Europe uh, now looks on the situation, what might be the outcome and what might be the result, because uh, everything what we hear until today is not as good as it should be. OK, Mogherini says that she wants more dialogue. That's not something we've seen too much of uh, thus far. A lot of pressure, though. Why has it been like that? Um, because um, I think we face a critical situation in, in Europe. Uh, when we talk about these issues, we usually don't think about Washington. But in these days, I think it's even more complicated to think of Washington because of the election and the results of the election. Uh, it might be um, a totally crucial question whether we should talk with President Obama or with uh, President at large John McCain. Uh, so this, uh, this already creates the difficulties we have in Europe because we know that when it comes to Europe alone, I think our policy would have been completely different when it comes to the last nine months of this year. But um, everybody knows here that the United States is very keen of having us, the Europeans, on the hook. And that's the way it is. Yeah, exactly as you just said. I mean, that is a widely held opinion that the, the US are a driving force behind the EU sanctions, although um, the big question that a lot of people are asking is, are they actually in Europe's interest? A lot of European farmers certainly don't think so. What do you think? Yeah, when we uh, look on the uh, industrial uh, aspects of uh, these sanctions, we know that uh, we are killing ourselves because of the financial figures which are related to this, uh, not only when it comes to the farming area, but also to other industrial areas. It's uh, not in our favor, it's not in uh, the Russian favor, it's only perhaps in US favor. And therefore, uh, there is not any good result on our side because of the sanctions. But the other critical uh, question, which is related to sanctions, uh, these are usually ways to war. Because uh, now they are talking about the third round, the fourth round, the fifth round. And uh, we know when will they start sending tanks. That is the reality and this creates a totally disastrous image in Europe. In Europe. The obvious question then, if it isn't in the EU's interests, why are they doing it? Why not resist that pressure from Washington? I think it was um, a very complicated situation when they decided to join the uh, regiment of the sanctions. Uh, but uh, your question is uh, right, it's uh, correct. And I think the Europeans have to make other decisions when it comes to uh, the situation after the US elections, which had been held on the 4th of November. OK, Mr Wimmer, thanks so much for coming on to speak to us. Willy Wimmer, former vice president of the OSCE Assembly, former deputy defence minister, of course, of Germany.